The man they saw killed, whom they themselves had laid out, was definitely not where they left him. And the facts about his death and resurrection and implications require clear action now from them. Here are the implications. Go and tell. Don't be afraid. I know you're seeking Jesus, so you're on our side. That's great. He's not here. He's risen. There's your hopes fulfilled. Come and see. Now go and tell. There's the invitation of the angelic messenger to the Christ, crucified, resurrected. Don't be afraid. Know your intentions are right. You are seeking Jesus. So come and see. He's risen not here now. And now go and tell the others that he's risen. And the key issue comes in at this point because this is absolutely fundamental and basic. Where do they meet with Jesus? So far they've met the angel. So far they've met the messenger. Where do they meet with Jesus? What happens just prior to when they go and meet with Jesus. How is it they come to meet with Jesus? It's when they go to town. Jesus met them as they were going to tell. Verse 9. So the women hurried away from the tomb. That's verse 8, isn't it? The women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, ran to tell his disciples, and then, verse 9, suddenly Jesus met them. Suddenly Jesus met them, greetings, he said, they came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, don't be afraid, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, there they will see me. Jesus meets them on the way to tell others. Let's not imagine the Lord Jesus doesn't meet with his people, he looks for encounter, he looks for meeting, he wants to meet with his people, doesn't he? He looks to develop a relationship with his people. And as he meets these emotional women, it's just worth stopping to notice what he says as he meets them. He, he meets them and he greets them. And what do you think he said to them? What do you think the greeting was? And he said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Were you trying to do Greek then? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what he says is, greetings. And... It's a standard greeting in first century Greek, but the word out of this context, if it's not used in the hello context, it just means rejoice. Rejoice. Now that would be great, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be great if you get in that habit of, you know, meeting people saying, hey, rejoice. That would be great. What a lovely way to greet somebody. Now, of course, it would be a bit odd in, in Wales. Uh, you'd be marked out as a real fruitcake, wouldn't you, straight away. Rejoice. But what a great thing. You meet somebody. Rejoice! Yeah! It's okay to be happy! You know, we, we do live in, we live, we live in Wales, and uh, you know, we do have to say something. It's okay to be happy. That'll be fine. <laughs> you know? Um, uh, sometimes, sometimes I think the outer reaches of, you know, migration of peoples on this island <laughs> have got a bit more dour than the, uh, perhaps the central bit. I don't know, perhaps that's unfair, but, but to have this first word from Jesus to them, after his resurrection, rejoice. The Saviour stood before them, raised from sin, atone, and death. And here's the crucial thing. They were ready to live the consequences of faith for the lives they were going to go on to lead. So he greets them and he says, rejoice. It is the way they normally said hello. But we've just got to keep hold of the fact that the authentic Jesus gives his followers joy and not misery. And then what he does next is he encourages them. He gives his followers encouragement. There's plenty that can discourage us. But Jesus comes and he says, don't be afraid. Just reconstruct for a minute what's happened. There are these ordinary peasant northern people. They're Galileans, okay? And they're in the big city. And what's happened is the person who perhaps means more to them than anybody else in the world has been wrenched from them and he's been horribly tortured to death and through it. And if you were known, marked out as one of his followers, as part of this troublesome group of people, how would you be feeling? How would you be feeling in, in Syria today, in, in, in one of those badly afflicted places, if you'd been a friend of one of the troublemakers, so-called? You'd be a bit afraid. And Jesus turns up and the first thing he does with them is he encourages his people, his, those who are willing to be his followers and live with the consequences of the truth of what's happening. Don't be afraid. 
Why is that important? Why is that so important for him to say, don't be afraid? Well, it's, it's this, isn't it? Jesus is looking for what from us? How are we put right with God in the first place? Forgive. He forgives us when, he, when we have... Uh, repentance. Repentance and faith, isn't it? Repentance comes out of faith because on the basis of what we believe, we did this last week, on the basis of what we believe, we repent, don't we? So faith comes first and then repentance follows it. Faith. Jesus is looking for faith. What's the opposite of faith? Uh, sin. A life in sin, yes. Unbelief. Unbelief, yeah. See, track it through Bible, and it seems to me what you get. The opposite of faith is fear, because it's not trusting. Now, because we're modern Western rationalists, we think faith is simply, it is, but it's not simply, we think it is simply, these are the propositions. And faith amounts to believing those things to be true. But actually, biblically, it is that, but it's more than that, it's trusting yourself. And the thing that stops you trusting yourself is fear. Biblically, fear is the opposite of faith. And Jesus is looking not for the absence of doubt, but for faith. Active, living, fearless trust in Him. He looks therefore for the courage that's born of faith, so He encourages them, don't be afraid. The soldiers are afraid. That is the reaction of unbelief. Do not be afraid. Jesus wants them to go confidently because he's got something really important for them to do. Your Jesus wants you. <laughs> he wants you to go and do something. He's met them, he's greeted them, he's encouraged them and he's sending them. He's got work for them to do, he's got something for them to do in his cause, in his kingdom. Go and tell my brothers... To go to Galilee and there they will see me. Here's the travel advice for the eleven. Here's their mission. Here's the point. You've seen the empty grave. You've seen the angel. You've met with the risen Jesus. And here's the point. Go and tell other people about this. You've got to go and tell. There is no uh, break in, in, the, in the spectrum, in the continuum here. Met, greeted, encouraged, commissioned. Jesus has met them. He shared his life with them in the hill country, the towns and villages of Galilee. The towns and villages of Galilee it was the back country. It was, it was, there were names of villages. It was out there. It was the back country. It was what we call Kevin Glad, right? It was a place they enjoyed some space and some peace away from the crowd and drawn close to him. And while he was preparing them to face his forthcoming betrayal and crucifixion, he promised them time away with him there again after his resurrection, like the, like the early days. He promised it in Matthew 26. And they loved him. And they enjoyed time with him. Just like your kids, what they want out of you most on a Saturday. What do you want most on a Saturday? It's time with your mum and dad, isn't it? And people who love Jesus, they want time. With their Jesus. That last week they'd been through such a lot. Over and above the personal danger they'd been in just for being the followers of Jesus, just emotionally it's been such a traumatic and difficult time. Now Jesus is coming good in his promise, and we're going to go out and have some time together. We're going to go up to Galilee for some special time, just one more time. And Jesus will there prepare them for the task that's coming to them of winning the world round to be followers of Jesus Christ. But here's the commission before the Great Commission. Go quickly and tell his disciples. He's risen from the dead. He's going ahead of you in the Galilee. There you will see him. Now I've told you.